Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're going to continue with the second episode of a three-part series about weight loss. The last episode was about diets and behavioral changes that have been data proven to work the most effectively. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Today, we're going to talk about prescription medications that can be used to help with weight loss, and I'll give you the latest data. I wanna stress that any medication used for weight loss should be used in addition to healthy foods and behavior modification, as I mentioned in my last episode. Setting reasonable expectations is a great way to start before discussing prescription weight loss medications with your doctor. So if you start a weight loss medication, do you know if your medication is working? Are there goals? Well, yes. Weight loss on the medication along with diet and behavioral changes should exceed one pound per week during the first month of therapy. So about one month after starting the medication, you should have lost four pounds or more. And between three to six months after using the medication, you should lose four to 5% of your baseline body weight. If this hasn't happened, then it's time to consider stopping the medication or switching to another one. Realize also that when drug therapy is discontinued, weight is typically regained. There are currently five prescription medications that have been approved for the long-term management of obesity. These medications include Orlistat, also known as Enacal, Naltrexone Bupropion, also known as Contrave, Fentramine Topiramate, also known as Cusimia, and a class of medications called GLP-1 receptor agonists, which include Liraglutide, or Saxenda, and Semaglutide, also known as Wegovi. For short-term treatment, meaning for 12 weeks or less, the drug Fentramine has been approved to treat obesity. Are you a good candidate for weight loss medication? While these drugs are typically used for patients with a BMI of 30 or greater, or someone with a BMI of 27 to 29 that has a condition likely caused or worsened by their weight, such as high blood pressure or diabetes. They have to be motivated to lose weight and been trying to lose weight over the past several months with diet and behavioral changes, but haven't been successful. So which one is best? There have been some really exciting studies that have come out in the past several years. Overall, based on what we know now, the class of medications called glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 receptor agonists have the best outcomes, with a one drug called semaglutide also known as Wegovi, shown to be the best drug within this class of medications. Let's talk a little bit more about the GLP-1 receptor agonists. As a physician, I'm really excited about this class of medications for weight loss. Other medications that have been on the market have some pretty significant concerns about them, which we will discuss later. But this class of medications is really only contraindicated in patients that have a family history of a very rare type of thyroid cancer, or a rare collection of endocrine tumors. This class of medications is now already being used widely at lower doses for treatment of type 2 diabetes under names such as Ozempic and Victosa. The one hangup that people have is that it is an injection, but semaglutide is only given once a week, while the liraglutide injection is given once daily. Both drugs are started at an initial dose and increased over a period of weeks. And of these two medications, semaglutide has been shown to be superior. It's not often that within a class of medications, certain drugs are compared against one another, but interestingly enough, the drugs are both manufactured by Novo Nordisk, and they were the sponsor for this exact type of trial. It's very rare. When two drugs are made by different companies, really the only way a head-to-head -head trial will be done is when it's sponsored by a governmental agency or an academic institution. At any rate, this study was just published in the highly regarded journal JAMA in January 2022. About 340 patients were enrolled and placed on either semaglutide once a week, liraglutide once a day, or placebo. After 68 weeks, the mean body weight loss was about 16% for once a week semaglutide and about 6% for the liraglutide group. And to break the data down even further, there were about 39% of the semaglutide group and 6% of the liraglutide group that lost 20% or more of their body weight. 
This is incredible. Unfortunately, gastrointestinal side effects were really common with both drugs. The most common side effect was nausea and occurred in about 60% of patients in both groups. Next was constipation in about 40%. Diarrhea and vomiting were more common in the semaglutide group at about 30% and about 20% in the lyriglutide group. But I thought this data point was reassuring. Of the patients that took daily lyriglutide, 13% of patients stopped the medication because of the side effects, while only 3% of the patients in the once-a-week semaglutide group stopped the medication because of side effects. And these side effects were more prevalent during and after a dose increase. I think the side effects may have been more common in the lyriglutide group because the instructions call for the drug to be increased every week over four weeks. But with semaglutide, the drug is increased over a much longer period of time, which is about 12 weeks. And remember, these are simply recommendations. You certainly can increase the drug even more slowly than that to decrease the side effects. So my first choice for a weight loss medication would be the injectable GLP-1 medication called semaglutide that's used once a week. Its brand name is Wegovi. But unfortunately, it's expensive and many insurance companies are refusing to cover its cost, which is terribly frustrating for any doctor like myself. Let's look at this table I made to have a quick reference for all the medications I'm talking about today. I used the more conservative body weight change percentage for each drug based on articles that looked at many studies and averaged the percentage weight loss for each drug. The first two drugs I mentioned are here, and if the cost takes your breath away, it did for me too. Okay, let's move on, but in my opinion, everything else mentioned from here on out is really considered a second line medication for weight loss. A medication called Orlistat has been on the market since 1999 and is FDA approved as a long-term treatment for obesity. It works by altering fat digestion and therefore increasing the amount of fat excreted in the feces. Orlistat is taken as a pill three times a day and is available both as prescription and over-the-counter. The over-the-counter name is Ally. The biggest complaint about this medication is the gastrointestinal side effects, including cramping, fecal incontinence, and oily stool. Of course, the more fat you have in your diet, the more likely you are to have an increase in side effects. And based on a good meta-analysis from The Lancet, published in December 2021, their summary stated, quote, Orlistat is widely used for weight loss worldwide, but possibly ranks no better than lifestyle modification alone in our study. And you can see in my chart that the percentage weight loss shows this and the cost is also high. The next medication on the market for weight loss is a combination medication that includes naltrexone and bupropion. Its brand name is Contrave. Naltrexone is a medication that's used for both opioid and alcohol dependence. And bupropion is also known as Welbutrin, which is a common treatment for depression, or Zyban, which is used to help patients quit smoking. Really, the only person I would consider using this combination is in someone who smokes and drinks a lot of alcohol and wants to cut down their usage. Physicians like myself don't often like fixed dose combinations because it limits our ability to go up and down on the components of the medication as we see fit. And one randomized controlled trial in 2009 found that the combination of bupropion and naltrexone didn't perform any better than just using bupropion alone. So if you're struggling with depression or anxiety, or if you want to quit smoking and also would like to use a medication that doesn't cause weight gain and possibly help with weight loss, consider using bupropion, also known as Welbutrin or Zyban. And let's look at the chart. The weight loss is about the same as with a combo, but the side effects are lower because you're taking less medication. Next up is another drug combination with fentramine and topiramate. Topiramate is also known as Topamax and is commonly used for seizures and migraine prevention. Topiramate can cause birth defects, so it's absolutely contraindicated in women who are pregnant or at risk for pregnancy, and a negative pregnancy test will be needed before starting this medication. I would probably be reluctant to prescribe this medication to any woman of childbearing age. The combination has been shown to be more effective than either drug alone in two randomized controlled trials and referring back to my chart, on average, it can help patients lose about 8% of their body weight. It cannot be used in patients with high blood pressure or cardiovascular disease for reasons that I will get to next. And finally, we'll end with the most commonly prescribed medication for weight loss around the world. 
is a medication called fentramine, and it was one part of the combination medication we just talked about. Since it's not paired with another medication, it does not have the warning about birth defects attached to it. This medication has some controversy around it because it really is only approved as a short-term treatment for weight loss, which means for about 12 weeks or less, which is absolutely ridiculous because we all know that weight loss takes many, many months to happen. This medication is called a sympathomimetic drug and works by causing a feeling of fullness, which then reduces food intake. This drug is considered a controlled substance because of potential for abuse, but the actual observed rate of abuse is very, very low. The biggest contraindication to this medication is uncontrolled blood pressure or cardiovascular disease in general. Because this medication rubs up your system and causes your heart rate to increase by about four to five beats per minute and has the potential to increase blood pressure as well. Many patients tell me they simply don't like the way fentramine makes them feel. The way I try to get around some of these side effects and issues is to start with a lower dose of fentramine and increase only as tolerated, or also to tell patients they can cut the dose in half and take it twice a day. I feel comfortable giving this medication to patients long-term, at least at lower doses, with ongoing monitoring of blood pressure and pulse, since this medication is approved for long-term as a combination with dopiramate, as I mentioned previously. When we look at the chart, the biggest pro for this medication is its price. And it has a reasonable amount of weight loss, but honestly, it hasn't been studied very well and probably never will since it's so inexpensive. So in conclusion, here is my order of medication preference for weight loss. First, I try semaglutide and then liraglutide from the class of GLP-1 analogs. If they're not tolerated or not approved by insurance, then I go to low-dose fentramine. It's cheap, and with education about the side effects, I think it can be used safely long-term. If that isn't tolerated, I will recommend bupropion alone, especially if there is a desire to treat depression, anxiety, or tobacco use. And remember that at about one month after starting the prescription medication, you should have lost four pounds or more. In between three to six months after using the medication, you should lose four to five percent of your baseline body weight. If this hasn't occurred, it's time to consider stopping the medication. Thanks for joining me.